Mm. You, heard, that, you heard from our president, good luck, Jonathan proposed that thing. Yes, and I, I you saw was... You the backlash. I, no, I was excited he didn't stay on it. He should have stayed on it, because that is the issue. We cannot afford the amount of money we are spending at every four-year cycle. How many incumbents in Nigeria are conducting fundraising to fund the election? Who is monitoring the money they are spending to know that they are not from the state treasury? Mm. When you want to contest an, against an incumbent, all you hear is that he has the resources. Is it his father's resources? Did he raise money? Did he win a lottery? Are you saying that because you're running for elections now? No, I have been of that view. While President Obasanjo was in office, I conversed it strongly with him that instead of us talking about a second term in office, we should be talking about a single term presidency. How long, do you, think it, how long do you think a single term should last for? Between five and six years. We should decide. The country should take a decision. But for me, the cost of re-election is too much for Nigeria to bear at this time. And secondly, the behavior of governors in the first term is antithetical to development. The spread of projects is done in designed in such a way to attract votes for the next election and not out of what is good for the state. So the decisions being taken by government at every time is fueled by the desire to win an election. And I believe that that second term presidency, if we had done what the Igbos proposed in 1995 Constitutional Conference, Ikweme was the spokesman for the Igbo group then, that proposed, let's have the six zonal structure, which eventually came to be. Let's have a single term of five, five years or then, or so they agreed at that time. And let it rotate for the 30 year period across the six geopolitical zones. And after that, it is open for everybody. Anybody who wants to run at any time can run. What would that have done for Nigeria? This is about 18 years now after we started democracy in 1999. We will have been 12 years away from going around the sixth geopolitical zone. We should stop being in a hurry. We need to calibrate this country and make effort at building it. And I think that that is where um, I think it's becoming obvious to everybody that it's all politics. In June 2013, the same Minister of Information argued against the prescription of Boko Haram and declaration as, as a terrorist organization. Because it has implications. So what is the implications of the one in the South East? That's now? why I asked you if you supported it. I supported the prescription. I mean, if you support the prescription of no, IPOB. If you follow the process of the law, because I believe that the law will be able to determine whether the organization has behaved in a manner that warrants it to become a terrorist organization. That is the beauty of democracy. But once you don't follow the law, then you are leaving it to the rule of the thumb. You are really leaving it to a decision by anybody who feels that an organization is doing something that is not happening, that is not doing something it wants. So I believe very firmly that what we need to do, and that is very important at this stage, is that we need to get into the nation building mode. It is not a settled issue. Nigeria as a country has come to stay. But nation building is a continuous process. All over the world, people are continuously resetting the button. People are constantly renewing the idea of a nation. So are you satisfied then? Are you confident that the institutions which we have currently have in place, because it was the same thing the president said, he talked about the National Council of State, he talked about the National Assembly, which is currently uh, undertaking a constitution review amendment process. Mm. Are you confident then that the institutions which we have in place can successfully see through these negotiations that you say must be ongoing? Now, there are many things that we can do without necessarily, there are many things we can do first without even necessarily talking about the law itself. There is the PDP in 1999. President Obasanjo defeated Ikweme in a hotly contested primaries at Joss Convention. When he finished, he now said, you know, the zoning structure of the PDP at that time was that the Senate presidency will come from the northern part of the country. But he said, to bring the people that had been behind President Ekweme, Vice President Ekweme, together, we will offer the Senate presidency to the southeast. General Bangida in 1985, confronted by low oil prices and the unsustainable structure of state enterprises, embarked on the largest privatization program that's happened in Africa at that time to free the state of his involvement in business. Now the time has come for the federal government of its own. Even without the prompting and the agitations going on in the country to say, 
what and what do the federal government do now that we can let go of the state and increase the capacity of our people to take care of their faith and destiny at their local levels? So I believe that just recourse to the law alone doesn't answer the question. The president has an opportunity, just like President Yeradu had an opportunity to declare amnesty in the Niger Delta region. Just like President Obasanjo had an opportunity to talk about political sharia and allow it to run its course. The president at this time needs to say to Nigerians, what do we do at this time? What can we do administratively before we even go into what we can do legislatively? And I believe until we get to the point where the legislative protest fails us, we can't sit back here and say, do we trust the system or not? We need to use it first and see whether it works or it doesn't work before we can propose the issue of the structure, whether we need to go back and tinker with the structure to be able to bring out the benefits we want. I heard you talk about the idea of the number of legislators on the, in the country and how that can be a stumbling block. We need to first put that to test. And after that... You don't think we've tested it sufficiently? Well, I don't think that we've tested it sufficiently because what has happened is that the National Assembly has been an interesting body. Um, once they get into the National Assembly, because of the nature of the National Assembly, where the leadership is formed by both the um, all the parties are involved in the leadership. Somehow they have been able to extract an elite consensus in the National Assembly. Um, they, they, they've been able to work out an elite consensus. I don't know if that works well for the whole of Nigeria or works well for the legislators, but it may be a template for Nigeria that we may not even be able to afford the kind of situation where we have, where we have opposition parties out of government totally and government in power. In the National Assembly, the minority leader, the majority leader, the whip are all part of the legislative leadership. And somehow, we haven't seen the legislature go, you know, polarized seriously in the country before now. 